cloud, we worship under the cloud. What he said to Nicodemus? In all that, unless a man be born again, forget it. In all that, with all that in place, unless a man be born again, he will not enter. He will not. <laughs> Unless a man be born again, he will not enter. He knew they refused. Jesus was literally, look, look, literally laying before him a new window. He was saying, <laughs> now that I have come, there are two lives. All that you have lived until now and all that begins from now on. There are two phases of life. But the question is, in all that, holy altars, holy dressing, holy worship, the people of repentance, we are the ones of holiness. Tell me, In all that, are you born again? He said, unless a man be born again, holy skirts, holy jackets, holy headscarves, holy messages, holy altars, holy, eh? unless a man be born again, forget it, he says, you will not see it. You are not entering. In the engagement of the forerunner, they come and he said, no. Why do you come? You brutes of vipers. You impediment of the word. You that try to block it. Why do you come? He said, please, please, please. Produce forth the fruit of repentance. And don't say that we are children of Abraham. We have inheritance. Don't say that. Because he was changing the order. Can I move? Now? Coming by night, I mentioned that. I said he wanted maximum time. Also, you still have to appreciate one thing. The humility of Nicodemus. That he could come but listen to this. In this engagement here, to get more time so I can ask deeper, so we can sort it out deeper, to come at night so nobody see me also. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another thing in that answer. I tell you the truth. Unless a man be born again, he cannot see it. He will not enter the kingdom of God. Another thing in that answer. You could almost tell That the Lord Jesus was asking him back. Back. You could almost hear the Lord asking him back. Say, why do you ask? As in, why do you ask? You Pharisees, why do you ask? Earlier on, I know how you reject it became a conflict, right? Contestation, right? Why do you ask? In other words, you could hear him asking back, he said, How know ye? 
he not? How come you don't know? <laughs> but in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, when you read chapter 3, the fall of man. <laughs> How know ye not that men fell and I have to come? Why would you ask? How come you don't know that Genesis 1 2, but Genesis 3, man falls? Very badly. <laughs> How come you don't know? Or you are claiming you don't know that there was a fall in Genesis 3. In other words, how know ye not that Genesis 3, 15, it's me, talks about me. And the woman shall have a son and it shall crash. And that would be the window of restoration. How come you don't know that? In other words, why would you come and ask? We can see you are from him. Why do you come? We can see you are from him. What is the message? And he says, unless a man be born again. Forget it. How know ye not that in Genesis 3 was the fall? And Genesis 3.15, it is me. It's talking about me there. I'm saying, based on the response he gave Nicodemo, the Pharisees, you could tell this. <laughs> huh? When he laid down the window of rebirth, when he says, unless born again, you could almost tell that, hey, but you know there was a fall. And I have to come. How can you ask? Because as fast as I said, it was informed by the Matthew 3 we read the contestation with the forerunner yeah that was the information and then we went further now we say in that response you could almost hear him asking why do you ask how can you ask when it happened in Genesis 3 and it's me who has to come and do these things how can you ask and these are, I'm talking about professors of the law. <laughs> these are the analysts. If you have an opinion piece, you want to pick an opinion, you interview them. These are the scholars. They get deep. They are the critics. They are the counsel, observers of the law. They observe. They observe how the law is going. These are the compliance people. Authority of compliance. So they observe how Israel is keeping the law. They advise Israel. And then now here, the teacher, they are the teachers of the law. They teach Israel. Israel sits under their council. And then now he comes and says, Rabbi, teacher, Molimu, maestro, tell us which is the way. I how can you ask when you've been teaching it for years? You've been teaching the way. <laughs> just, just a little bit of his humility, right? Now, I want us to go back a little bit in time and see what happened in Genesis 3. And then, and then, understand deeper why he gave this answer. Hallelujah. Genesis 3, precious people, 1 to 10. I'm going to read. And he says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. 
he said to the woman did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden verse 2 the woman said to the serpent we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die you will not for he says you will not surely die the serpent said to the woman for God knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil verse 6 when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom she took some and ate it she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it verse 7 then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves verse 8 then the man and his wife heard the sound of God the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden but the Lord God called to the man where are you where are you? Verse 10. He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. I am jumping now to verse 23 and 24, right? So I can be able to explain together. Verse 23, 24. Verse 23 says, So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. Verse 24. After he drove the man out, he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life, meaning to stop him from gaining access to the tree of life, meaning to stop them from gaining access to the leaves of the tree of life. And remember, we are within the context of the answer. We say, why the disconnect? He said, the anointing is right. The power is right. The miracles are right. The signs and wonders are right. Tell us, why do you come? And then he answered, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter. He will not. Now listen to this now. And I said, in his answer of saying, unless born again, you could almost tell that the Lord Jesus was shocked. He said, if you are the teachers of the law, how come you don't know that there was a fall and I must come? But let's go into this fall now. That you may understand. Listen to this now. In Genesis 3 you see when God created man, the church, we see that there was the original blueprint, the original design of the creation of the church. And in that design, look at this now. In that original design, death, kifo, muerte, in Spanish, death was not factored in. I want us to move step by step, slowly. In that original setting, that first blueprint, death was not included in the equation. It was not put in the factor. Why? Because 
you can see there, he's saying that in that creation, he intended that if man, the church he has created, will walk right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Will walk straight. Will be in right standing with God. Will worship obedience. Will worship righteousness. Will worship truth, the truth. Will worship holy. That original blueprint. If man would obey, walk according to that plan, death was never supposed to be there. Huh. That's why Genesis 5, 24, you see Enoch replaying that blueprint. <laughs> Genesis 5, 24, Enoch replayed it. Enoch disapproved the enemy. As in, guess what? It is possible. Hallelujah. I know some of you at this moment as we speak, you have disapproved the devil. In your lives, in your ways, in many things. For me, I can say this. That when I came, they said, what type of gospel? We are not Christ. We are just mere mortals. You are asking us to live a very high standard of holiness. It's not possible. But now I can tell them, guess what? You are liars. It is possible. Why? Because even the Bible says it is possible. It says the same Holy Spirit that helped Jesus overcome is available to you. But over here, if you read Genesis 5.24 where he says Enoch lived 65 years until he became the father of Methuselah. When he became the father of Methuselah then you see from there on Enoch walked with God 300 years. And he says, all together, Enoch was 365 years when God took him away. Snatched him, did not see death. Meaning, it is possible. I'm just helping you understand the original blueprint. Which did not have death factored in. Meaning, if he walked right with God. Why? Because you see... Genesis 3, 8, you hear the walking in the cool of the day. Genesis 3, 8, he says, he heard God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Meaning, the Lord always walked on a daily basis with him in the garden, on the, in the cool of the day, on everyday basis. Genesis 3, 8. And then, to disapprove that, to show that, look, it is possible to walk with him even 300 years. Not just 90 years we have today. But listen to this. Eh? He says, Enoch walked with him 300 years and did not see death. Can I move on now? So in that answer to Nicodemus, the answer to Nicodemus, look at this now. It's like the Lord was telling him, how come you are the teachers of the law and you are not aware of the fall? And he's saying, how come you are not aware that you Pharisees, when you are busy there, teaching there, about the manna that came down from heaven, and was eaten by men. Your fathers. And the cloud 
that your fathers walked under. How come you did not know that it is I you are teaching about? It is me you are teaching about. Because he's saying that walking you are talking about in the wilderness. Let me tell you one thing. There was already a walking with Adam in the garden. And when men fell, the walking with God was lost. That's how verse 23 and 24 pronounces judgment. Are we together now? And he was saying, hey, you are talking about the cloud in the wilderness leading you. But there was the walking with God. That cloud was a foretelling. Because he's saying, when the cloud was walking with your forefathers, it was me he was talking about. He was saying that when that manna came down to your forefathers and they ate it, it was me. That is the bread of life that comes from God, from heaven, that if any man eat, Let me start step by step. Let us start from why he came at night, right? And we said very clearly, he knew that he wanted personal time with him. Personal. Personal time. Because in the day, so many people be clouding, surrounding, stampede, pushing around, full, coming, busy. Personal time. I want to approach him alone. And I said, he wanted uninterrupted conversation. And the other one I said, why he came alone in the night? It's because in the nature of Kada, you come to me and you ask me. Now, how do I go and ask? And yet, I'm in the high class, elite class political class Sanhedrin authority secretly avoiding animosity from his contemporaries personal time uninterrupted and we see that this coming at night became the hallmark, the hallmark that defined Nicodemus in the Bible this is what finally became his characteristic, his feature. And I have two scriptures here, which is also, I said, John chapter 3 verse 2, the coming at night, but I also have John 19, 39. This became the feature. This coming at night is what became, what defined Nicodemus. John chapter 19 verse 39. It became what characterized him. What defined him. What cataloged him? What marked him? Hallelujah. John 19, 39. 
he was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus in the night. That became the definition of Nicodemus. That coming at night is what now finally defined him. Because if he came to you say, my name is Nicodemus. Say, which Nicodemus? Are you the one that came at night? Or oh, which one are we talking about? Because the one that came at night, we know. And I talked about the ranking of Nicodemus. I said he was a professor of law. Pharisees, look at it in terms of the Pharisees. They were the professors of law. They were the scholars of law. The critics of law. The analysts. They were the observers. I said compliance officers ensuring the law is observed. Is complied to. They were the watchers of the law. The authority of the law. Teachers of the law. They were the legal counsel. They were the elite class Sanhedrin. So now I've covered that. Hallelujah. Can I move to another thing which is quite important now? There is a statement Nicodemus gave. Step by step, precious people. When you read the manner of engagement and the statement from Nicodemus, you pick some things, right? Let us go and see. Look at what Nicodemus says. Can we go back to John chapter 3? The baseline scripture, reference scripture, foundation scripture. I'm reading from verse 1 again, just to recap, refresh, and launch me. Right? And he says this, John 3, 1 again, he says, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. Everybody focus here. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. He did not say, Rabbi, I know. He did not. He did not say, Rabbi, I know that you are a teacher come from God. He was non-committal. Did not commit himself. That teaches me a lot. Of, why did he say like this? But even Jesus understood when he hears that, he knows, oh, this man is sent. Meaning, we have been watching. Meaning, I have been sent to ask you. We know there must have been an observing there going on. You know the cripple that sits at, by the water? <laughs> he reached there and the cripple walked. They were following the chronology, the development. The way the Lord operates is this. Whether you like it or not, if you turn left, you hear it. Turn right, you hear it. Look forward, hear it. Turn back, hear it. All directions. Jay, did you hear what happened in Kakamega? Uh, me, you know, I, what is it? Because I'm busy here. Hey, I'm the only one that went there. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so you see, they heard. So they had to follow. But now listen to this. He did not say, I know. He said, we know. I want to begin on that one now. Why did Nicodemus say, we know? Why didn't he just come and say, Lord, I know. He was totally uncommitted. He did not commit himself.